Hello, what's the point of Lisp? Recently on Hacker News, I saw this comment. I'm almost convinced people are pretending to like the Lisp syntax. I just don't get it, they said. Honest inquiry here. What is the appeal or benefit of the Lisp syntax? Is it just that some people have a subjective preference for it? I thought this was a great question. So let's take a look at some of the language features that make Lisp useful. But first of all, let's answer the question, what is Lisp? You might associate Lisp with strange bearded Unix gods, but the truth is it's actually pretty simple to understand. In the same way that languages like C, JavaScript, and Java look kind of the same with those curly braces, Lisp-based languages all share a similar syntax. At its core, Lisp is a change in syntax. Take a function call which looks like this in most languages. Print 42. In Lisp, it looks like this. And it really is that simple. We're moving the brace from after the function name to before the function name. And all Lisp code looks like this. It's a list of symbols with the first symbol being a function call or another action and the remainder of the symbols being arguments. And that's why Lisp is short for list processor. Lisp processes lists of symbols. The key insight here is that in Lisp based languages, the code is data. This is simply a list of symbols and all code in Lisp is made up of lists of symbols. One reason this is important is it's exceptionally simple to implement which means it's easier to write new tooling for Lisp-based languages, as well as building compilers and other tools more simply. Let's take a look at four language features that make Lisp great. The first one is faster editing. Because Lisp syntax is simple and consistent, it makes it easy to pass in your editor. That means editor plugins can make editing and refactoring code much faster. With a single keystroke, you can do things like popping bits of code in or out of scope, deleting logical blocks of code, etc., and refactoring functions. For example, it's faster and less error prone to grab a section of code inside a function and break it out into a separate function. If your Lisp is functional, which many are, this is even smoother. You never really have to think about syntax. In a language like Python or JavaScript, you have different syntax for different operations and expressions, and these languages introduce new syntax relatively frequently. By contrast, in a Lisp-based language, the syntax for setting a variable looks the same as the syntax for looping and for calling a function and for everything else. For example, in many languages, this is valid syntax for assigning a value to a variable. How does it look in a Lisp? You'll notice the consistency with our earlier function call. Instead of print here, we have def for define. So we're saying define q as 42. Once again, we have our doing word in the first position, and then the remaining symbols are arguments. This looks just the same as our print function call earlier. This consistency of syntax means less cognitive overhead and makes it easier to reason about code. And this basic syntax hasn't changed since the 1960s. A third feature of Lisp-based languages is a heavy emphasis on interactive programming. As with the syntax, interactive programming has been an emphasis in Lisp-based languages since the 60s. In modern languages, we know and love the REPL, the read, eval, print loop. These days, people are used to accessing the browser console, the node REPL, and a REPL in Python and other languages. And this feature came from the world of Lisp. Likewise, hot reloading of code has become more common these days, especially in front-end development. This ability to hot load code into running software has long been a feature of Lisp-based languages. Modern Lisp-based languages like Clojure take this one step further and allow you to do it over the network with the nREPL or networked REPL. This is a cool feature where you can have live running code on the internet and connect your tooling to the software to inspect, debug, and make modifications in real time. Lisp-based languages also pioneered incremental compilation and dynamic code modification. What all of this means for ordinary programmers is that Lisps encourage building programs incrementally. And the tooling provides advanced debugging facilities that allow the inspection and modification of running programs. And in general, the culture of Lisp has an emphasis on exploratory programming and interactive problem solving. Speaking of dynamic code modification, that brings us to a fourth major feature of Lisp, and that is macros. Again, because of the consistency of the syntax, it's easy to write code that parses other code and modifies it. This allows you to do truly unique things with Lisp-based languages. And so it's much easier to write domain-specific languages within a Lisp. Metaprogramming also gives you the ability to add new features to the language without changing the actual core language itself. Some common targets and new language features from Lisp macros are things like special control flow, async handling, and creating new types of function definitions for special classes of functions. Metaprogramming is not something I personally use a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm glad that very smart people are able to modify the language in a way that I can just import into my code without having to rely on upstream changes from the core developers. Now, finally, let's talk about some trade-offs in Lisp-based languages. The first one is setting up the tooling is sometimes more involved. To get full use out of a Lisp, you need to install an editor plugin that understands the syntax. And other plugins are available for connecting to nREPLs and dynamically modifying code and other debugging features. The second trade-off is that the syntax is for many programmers quite alien and takes some getting used to. The third trade-off is that many modern Lisps such as Clojure run on top of other runtimes. So the interrupt can add an extra layer between your code and the underlying engine. A fourth trade-off is that Lisps sometimes have a smaller community than other programming languages, especially popular ones like Python and JavaScript. 
And finally, there's the issue of hiring. Because the community size is smaller, it can be harder to find developers, although often those developers are higher quality in general. And finally, if you want to try out a Lisp yourself, there are Lisps available that run on top of most runtimes, and you can install one of those if you'd like to try it out. I'll cover these in a future video, so stay tuned if you'd like to check that out. So hopefully that's helped explain why Lisp can be beneficial. And it's not just a subjective preference. If you decide to continue your Lisp adventures, best of luck. Have fun and see you later.